was fabulous. Okay, this is famous Oliver Twist tune. I just started practicing today is what it says there in the description box of Tony's video. <laughs> I think that's pretty good for only practicing for one day. What do you think? <laughs> what the heck? I know, right? <laughs> oh. Hello, hello. Thanks for coming, everybody. I got, uh, uh, well, I put the colors in the palindrome here. I don't know if you can see the colors. We got blue, red, black, red, blue. And you got one, like, good solid story, a couple of quick ones, a fun game. And then this here is just a little question at the end. I'm just giving folks a chance to catch on that the live is started and come on over. Hi, Vicki. Welcome. Awesome. Only on square pegs. Not sure what that means. Hi, hi, hi. All right. Thanks for coming to my current events show, everybody. I think every time I'm on here, I have a different angle, different camera angle, different side of the flip chart. I'm standing, I'm sitting, I'm still trying to figure out like what works. And I'm basically using daylight to light me. I do have a lamp on, but mostly it's daylight. And this time of day is not going to be daylight for much longer. So I'm going to have to figure that part out here uh, come pretty soon, I think. Uh, crazy flute music. It was actually, um, I think, a clarinet. It was definitely like this. Maybe it was, um, gosh, I can't think of the other the other instrument. It was a wind instrument, and he was holding it down this way. It sounded like it was a little deeper than a clarinet. Uh, an oboe, maybe? Oboes higher than clarinets? I don't know. All right, we're going to wear, wear masks is fun. We're not going to do too much maths today. Only a smidge. Last week was a lot of maths. This one is more like conceptual themes kind of stuff. What I did was I, you know, Jason did a live the other day, not the one that he just did yesterday, but pretty recently, where he went over all of his predictions and he put up a link to where you could look at, like follow along. Where it's, and I printed it out, which is very handy dandy, I got to say. And I sort of just like breezed through it and I picked out some that I had forgotten about, you know, like, oh, I wonder if that's happened. I don't know. And that's kind of where I got I, some of them I already knew that I wanted to talk about, but some of them I gleaned from this lovely document that he gave the link to and I printed it out. So, all right, let's get started. So we've got a uh, food, glorious food, which we listened to just now, uh, or uh, let them eat cake. Uh, and then went on Rome and uh, a story about a fuzzy baby goat <laughs> using code a little bit. And is it a stage play? And yes, we can't. This one's going to be a fun game puzzle that we're going to figure out. And then we've got a four in one. This one, I actually wrote it as two in one. And then I started writing it all out on the page and I realized, holy cow, that's four. It's a four in one. So that's kind of exciting. And uh, this here is a question that I'm going to ask at the end, and I don't know how much we'll talk about it or not, but if you guys have questions, you know, I'm thinking, oh, if you put like the at symbol and then my name, then it highlights it when your your comment, it'll highlight it for me. That's actually easier for me to see than, than the all caps, honestly, because it highlights it in bright orange. So if you have any questions for me, if you could do that, and if you don't know what I mean, Ask somebody in the chat. I bet they know what I mean. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so I've actually talked about this before on my Facebook page, but I don't know that I've covered it on my YouTube channel. So the first World Food Conference was in 1974, and that connects to this year. So over the over the main flip date, 1998, real simple one. We've been looking at 1974 all year. And Kissinger was a major player in this one. And he had he said something like no within 10 years, no child should be going to bed hungry 
or something like that. And it was in Rome, Italy, and it was in November, and it spanned 12 days. And that'll become important as we move down. Um, the reason I said uh, uh, when on Rome is on, right? The next one wasn't until 1996, and they changed the name a little bit. It is. It was called the World Food Summit. It was also in Rome, and it was also in November, and it only spanned five days. Then this here is uh, the flip date between 74 and 22. And then the next one was in 2002. It was another World Food Summit. They moved the, the month to June it only spanned four days. It was also in Rome. Then they did um, the World Food Summit on the, the World Summit on Food Security. So the name changed again, but it's all through the same organization here. Um, it went back to November, and it only spanned three days, and it was also in Rome. Then we go to, we skip all the way to last year, 2021, and it was initially announced that it was going to be the World Food Summit, and it was going to be in New York, and check out the date. There's our 923 popping up again, which surprised me. I didn't realize that, but you realize that's also only one day. So between 74 and last year, we went from 12 days, almost two weeks of talking about food problems in the world, down to one day. So now we get World Food Day. <laughs> we get to eat one day. Let them eat cake. <laughs> one day of food and the whole rest of the year hungry, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so we went from the World Food Conference of 12 days down to World Food Day. And then it ended up being virtual. It was not actually held in New York because of the woot woot that uh, everybody was staying home for. So this year, yeah, World Food Day. And it is 1016. I guess World Food Day is always the third Saturday. Is that right? I think I might have thrown away my notes that said... I might be getting them confused. World Food Day might always be on the 16th. But anyway, if you go to their website, FAO.org, you can see what all they're doing. And, and it's basically, if you have an event that you're doing in your town about food, put it on our thing and we'll show it on the map. So there's not really any kind of organized, like, international thing. It's just everybody everywhere doing stuff about food. One thing that I really liked and which is why I gave the website is because they're going to be lighting Niagara Falls blue. I don't know how many lights that takes. It's a stunning photograph. So if you go to this website and you click on the link that says Niagara Falls and it takes you to a webcam, a live webcam of the Niagara Falls. And then if you watch it on October 16th, you're going to see them light it up blue. And I think it's only for like 15 minutes or something like that. But it's really, really pretty if it looks like the picture, which I assume it does. And in the meantime, it's just kind of cool to watch Niagara Falls. You actually, it's a live webcam. I guess it's always up. So I thought that was kind of neat. So that's why I put the, uh, the website on there. But I, I just thought this was interesting, and I don't always even know what I'm looking at until I put it on here like this. Like, I hadn't realized that we decreased the number of days over this time span until I had it written out here. And so I added those, those little, the number of days, I added that at the end. So this was the, uh, the first part of it, Food Glorious Food. But then we're going to take a look at Let Them Eat Cake, right? Because when I saw that it was October 16th, I said, gosh, isn't that sweetest day? And what is sweetest day? 
I wasn't exactly sure. I thought it was when you gave gifts to your sweetheart. But actually, there's a whole, like, story behind it. It's kind of cool. So, Sweetest Day is actually on the, okay, this is the one that's the third Saturday in October, so the date changes. So, World Food Day is always on the 16th. This year, it happens to fall on the 15th. And it was started in October of 1921 in Cleveland, Ohio, from a bunch of confectioners who wanted to share sweets with people who would not ordinarily be able to partake of sweets. Poor folks, homeless folks, orphans, uh, working class people that couldn't really afford to get sweets. And they went around town with, I think, 20,000 boxes of candy and just passed them out to people. And it was just kind of a goodwill sort of a thing, you know, sharing your bounty with others of less fortune, which is a nice thing. I liked it. So it just, the, the, the dates matched up that, that mid October. And that's the only reason it, that it's on here. Really. It's not like a, a current event necessarily. I just thought it was interesting that the dates were so similar between world food day and sweetest day. And then once I wrote out these dates here, I realized we were looking at 100 years, one week and one day from the original one to the one that's happening this year. And they have like all little suggestions on the website of what you can do to celebrate the sweetest day. You know, <laughs> it's very cute, like pretty obvious things, but uh, okay, dropped all my notes. <laughs> How you guys doing in there? Very choppy audio. Hmm, I'm not sure how to fix that. Choppy. You can hear me loud enough, but it's just kind of like breaking up. This last time I had a little notice that said my internet connection was faulty, but it, it kept going anyway and it was fine. But um, I'm not seeing that notice this time. So I am seeing how many people are watching though. Last time I don't remember seeing that. I was looking everywhere. And now I can actually see how many of you are out there. So that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, Kissinger. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go into him. Uh, all right. Audio is good here. Good here. OK, five by five. <laughs> I feel like I feel so hip when I learn like new lingo. <laughs> all right. So we're going to move on to the next one. Yes. So, this one here is the uh, the fuzzy baby goat story. I kind of feel like Cliff High, you know, like he, that way back when Cliff High was first starting, he, he had a category that he called space goat farts, <laughs> which was something to do with aliens, I think, and it just made, made us laugh so hard. We laughed about space goat farts for years after that, um, but uh, fuzzy, another word for fuzzy is nap. Like if you were fluffing up some leather or fabric, you're napping it. And then the baby goat is called a kid. So this is a prediction that Jason has made for this year that as far as I'm aware of, hasn't happened. I I would be interested to know if any of you have, because I don't have a TV, so I'm not like up on all the latest like big stories I get a lot of the big stories, but not all of them. So I just had to like, you know, type it in and search for it. Like, has anybody been, had their, you know, baby goat fuzzed? <laughs> uh, and I found out that w there was something that just happened this week, which the timing was weird, like crazy that it just happened. Uh, a whole family was taken in California. And I believe it was just Thursday. I, I can't remember if it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that they found the family and they had all been killed. And so that's why I say, if this is true, it's tragic. And if it's not true, why would it be a false flag staged event? Like a false flag is with an end goal you know, you're trying to get people to do something by, you know, creating a story that's not true. But why? Like, 
where, where what's the story here and what would they want us to do what are they trying what would they be trying to move us our our feelings or our actions to do by inventing this story and i watched a couple of videos about there was one in the court where they were still looking for the family and then i saw the one of the sheriff after they had found the family and aside from the courtroom video looking kind of like a soap opera, it seemed pretty real to me. Uh, I did not really see anything that screamed staged fake. You know, like there have definitely been some in the past and I don't want to uh, say what they were, but were it's like real shady, like interviews with people and you're like really i'm not buying that but i didn't get that feeling from this story um and i think courtroom videos just uh, they look like that they look like a soap opera it looks staged but i think that's just an artifact of the the room and the camera and all that stuff so have you guys heard of this story? It happened in California and it happened in, I think it was Merced County, Merced. And I was curious for clues that would tell me that there was something staged here, right? So I just thought, okay, well, Merced, I'll look that up. And it was interesting because I, as I thought, it's, you know, uh, means mercy, grace, um, forgiveness, and those sorts of things. There was a whole lot of that definition. But then the Urban Dictionary had a very interesting alternate definition, and that's to do with gaming. So if you're, you know, playing a, a shoot 'em game with other people and somebody, like, kills you, you would say to them in the chat or something like, oh, you just got mersed. And it comes from the word mercenary. So this is a brand new story, brand new news. And so I don't know anything about the suspect. He did try to kill himself after the incident. And now his brother is involved too. I don't know what their backgrounds are, how these people might have been connected to see if it was maybe Merced or, or what. I really don't know. And I can't imagine, that's just such a tragic story, and I just can't imagine that it would be staged. I, I don't know what the purpose would be for doing that. So, I know. I, this is the fir first I'd heard about it as well, yeah. It, yeah, I don't watch the news either, except for, you know, Tucker Carlson, and we'll come to him in a minute here. But uh, And Redacted, which is uh, Clayton Morris, who used to be on Fox as well. I just can't stand the other, like the CNN and BBC. I, I, I can't do it. Fox, there's like basically Clayton and Tucker are the only ones that I watch because the rest of them are just as bad. I, I really don't like television, but I like to keep up on what's going on. And in fact, I like to keep up on what's going on now more than I did, say, a year ago because of the archaics predictions and the isometrics involved and finding the connections between things and the maths work out and that kind of thing. So I actually pay more attention now than I did over the last decade. Your family lives in that area? Well, be safe. I don't know. They're saying this guy was just like a, a robber, a, a broke guy, and he just... Took, he kidnapped a whole family out of a, out of their, uh, I think it was a, a business of some sort. And their poor dog was barking. He was tied up in the back. And I was like, you got facts this, man? I think you should untie your dog. Because then you could have said, sick him. It's just very sad. But you know what? If it is staged, then it's not sad. It's creepy weirdo stuff, right? I don't know. I don't know what to make of this one, guys. But uh, I suppose maybe one of us will hear more about it in the future and we'll be able to discern more. I have a dog barking right outside my window. I apologize. All right. Are we ready to play a fun game now? 
whoa, I'm so, I'm excited about this. Okay, so we have, uh, yes, that's what puppies are for, exactly. Um, okay, so I have a new candidate for our potential new uh, president leader guy who's gonna swing that pendulum all the way right for us, okay? A new candidate, new person we have not discussed. And what I wanna do is read to you these things about this person, and then we are going to check off if it covers these categories. We have uh, all the categories of things that Jason has said that this person is going to lead our country into. So we have religious, conservative, the country will be isolationist and rich. The society generally is going to be kind of hedonistic. And we know that this person is going to be adorable, right? America is going to adore this person. So we want to see, uh, based on these things that we know about this person, are they adorable? <laughs> so I'm going to get my red pen, which I also dropped on the floor. And uh, do androids dream of electric sheep, Blade Runner? Yes, Philip K. Dick, love him. Love him. You know that you are in a simulation if you see something change. He said that in a speech in the 70s. If something changes and you notice that something's changed, that is a very good indication that you're in a simulation. And I personally am Mandela affected and maybe a lot of you are as well. And for me, that's, there you go. That something definitely changed. In fact, quite a few things have changed. Um, I love how Matt from Quantum of Conscience talks about Australia having moved. He said, it's ridiculous. It's just insane. I mean, it can't possibly be that close anymore. That's crazy. It just moved. <laughs> and not everybody has the same things. It's like uh, personal for you, what gets changed and what doesn't. It's a very odd experience. But uh, all right. So we're going to we're going to go through our list of things and I'm going to check off. You guys can chime in and uh, see if I miss a category or something. And then we're going to see who this might be. OK, this person was recent recently called the media demonic. All right, so mm, I would say demonic is uh, falls into our religious category. And we know that our media is pretty darn left leaning, right? So I'm going to say that because he is uh, calling the media demonic, that's not a compliment. I'm going to say that that falls on the conservative side. Yeah. All right. And he recently claimed that he didn't know his ex was close with the Clintons. Hmm. I'm not sure. What do you, do you guys, is this, are we still on connection unstable? Oh no. Are we unstable? Are we, are we still here? You're good? Okay. So I'm going to say that uh, didn't know his ex was, with, was close with the Clintons. We're going to call that conservative. All right. Number three, he has declared himself to be a pro-life Christian. So that one's pretty straightforward. I'm going to say that's religious. Let's see if it falls under any of these. I don't think it. that sounds hedonistic at all. All right. He supports the arts. I tend to associate the arts with more of a left thing. I don't know if you guys do as well. If you uh, think something different, you can chime in. I'm going to say that that, oh, sorry, no, not conservative, right? If he supports the arts. And another one is he supports environmental stewardship. Now, environmental stewardship could go either way, in my opinion. Like Adam and Eve were put into the garden to dress it and keep it. Um, that's environmental stewardship. So you could say that that's kind of a conservative right 
take on environmental stewardship. But then, of course, you've got the, you know, people are terrible and they're killing the planet, environmental stewardship on the other side. So I'm unclear without any more data which way that falls, right? Um, he supports the restoration of school prayer. Again, and torn here, I get school prayer is definitely religious, right? But then is it really conservative to want to have anything to do with schools? Since they're based on the Prussian model, which is a very left sort of a system. So I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't care what the schools do, honestly. <laughs> prayers or no prayers. But if we just take it from a traditional, like, American's perspective on school prayer, I think most people would say that that is a, a religious conservative perspective. Yeah? Stewardship. Keep it clean. Yeah. All right, next. He is for a strong national defense. Okay. Strong national defense. Yeah, I'm going to say that's definitely conservative. Yeah. Any other categories I'm missing? All right. He is also for America first diplomacy. That definitely sounds like isolationists to me. Any others? America first diplomacy. Is that a conservative thing? A valley? Trump? Question mark, question mark? Oh, good guess, but no. This is, this is a, a clue up here. <laughs> All right. Um, isolationist, possibly conservative. Not sure. Did I already check the conservative? Maybe I, oh, I'm starting to lose track of myself. Better move on. Okay. Some say that his mental health is unsound. That's possibly he missed. Depends on what the unsoundness is, I suppose. Mental health is unsound. Eh, I think that covers it. Am I missing any? Okay. Um, he admits ignorance about taxes and foreign policy. Who's all for taxes? Like, He's he's ignorant about taxes, but that just means he's maybe not good with numbers. Not that he's one way or the other, right? I'm not sure that that uh, falls under any category. Ignorant about foreign policy does sound a little bit isolationist. Like if you just don't care about foreign policy, you know, like we're just going to stick to ourselves and you guys do what you want, right? All right, so then we have, he, oh, wait a minute, I missed one. He encouraged Blexit. Blexit. Have you heard of this? This is the first I've heard of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Blexit was encouraging black voters to switch parties from Democrat to Republican. So I'm going to say that's definitely conservative. Uh... Yeah, I think that covers that one. He was recently interviewed by Tucker Carlson. So there's Tucker again. And, you know, Tucker Carlson is definitely, he's on Fox. That's conservative. Uh, does that make him adorable? I don't think so. Might make him rich. Do, do non-rich people get interviewed by Tucker Carlson? <laughs> Ah, bingo, 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 bingo. <laughs> ah, do you see this now? Now that you guys have guessed it. <laughs> so the last ones I have are, uh, he believes that white lives matter, which I thought he gave a great answer to that question. You know, like, why are you wearing a white lives matter t-shirt? What's your stance on that? He's like, well, white lives matter because they do. 
which I thought was a good answer. Very politic. Um, I don't know that white lives matter. I mean, he's a black guy saying that, so I really don't know that that falls under any of our categories. Um, he ran for president in 2020 on the birthday party ticket. Fun. Maybe he missed it. I don't know. Does that make him adorable? <laughs> the birthday party ticket. <laughs> He's a goofball, I think. Well, is his mental health unsound? <laughs> but speaking of birthdays, He's a Gemini, and his birthday is on June 8th, and he was born in 1977. So that's 6877, which is fun. Uh, and on October 18th in 2021, so just a year ago, he officially changed his name from something that means the only one to something that means you. So you guys guessed it. Before we got to the end of my questions, and we've got Con, yay, West. <laughs> and he changed his name to Yay. Ye? Yay. I think it's pronounced Yay. Um, which is a funny story from my life. I just, it's real quick, I gotta share it. One day, my ex-husband and I were walking down the highway, and we came across a guy walking the other way, and he had a little wagon he was pulling behind him with some stuff piled on it, and we got to talking, and he said one day he wanted to change his name to you. So then when people said, you know, who are you, he could say, I am you. And that's exactly what Kanye West said when he was asked about why, what's ye, what yay, what does that mean? It means you. So I'm you. And it was exactly the same thing that this guy told us like a decade ago on the side of some highway in Oregon or California. It was really funny. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's weird, right? Uh, yeah, so that is what I've got. Does any of those things make him adorable? I don't, I don't, I'm not into rap. Uh, do people think that Kanye West is adorable? Or do they think he's a crazy man or a stalker weirdo? living across the street from his ex-wife. Uh, he's a weirdo. <laughs> you said that before I even did, right? Uh, poking fun at the system. I don't know. He did it. Did you, did any of you guys watch that interview with Tucker? Because he's, he seemed pretty serious, but also very nervous. I, I was not expecting him to be so nervous looking like he was, shaky like his voice was shaky his breath was shaky it was very odd to watch and he spoke very slowly and he thought about his words carefully it seems like he he's serious i mean he ran for president in 2020 uh, okay he invented some weird birthday party to run under i'm not sure you think he's poking fun at the system it, it absolutely could be He's a genius and very successful. Oh, Rich. I wanted to talk about Rich because, boy, the man is rich, right? The last the last dollar amount I saw was actually kind of funny. <laughs> $6.6 billion is what this man is worth. So he's rich, but does that really translate to the rest of the country? Does he care if anybody else gets rich or does it, you know? I don't really feel like the man's adorable. I didn't really appreciate what he did to Taylor Swift on stage? Like, that's back when I was watching TV. But then again, I'm not a huge fan of Taylor Swift either, really. So it's just kind of weird to do. I don't know. Just kind of rude. And uh, that that makes him anti-adorable in my mind, that incident with, with Taylor Swift. And there's probably a whole bunch of others, too. White Lives Matter poking fun. Yeah. Yeah. He couldn't complete a sentence. Well, you should check out this Tucker interview that he did because he was very, he was pretty well-spoken, pretty well-spoken. Do you listen to his music? Hell no. No, no. I, I don't think I would recognize one of his songs if I tripped over it. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, it's rap. That's my, the extent of my knowledge of it. I mean, he's a good looking fella, but. All right. The Taylor Swift thing was pretty weird. It was very rude. Very weird. 
Definitely a weirdo. I agree with that. All right. We are moving on. You guys guessed it. Oh, wait a minute. I <laughs> see. I stuck this on to remind me. One last thing. Does anybody here know where he was born or would like to take a crack at guessing? Where was he born? Any guesses? And you guys are like a little bit delayed. I think the chat is a little bit delayed, so I'm giving you a chance to uh, Ohio? No. Chicago? No. Michigan? No. All right, I'll tell you. Georgia! Bum, bum, <laughs> There's my Georgia again, which was a little bit weird, I gotta say. Because I feel like every time I see Georgia's, I'm supposed to pay attention to it for some reason. I don't even know how I came across this. I think it's just like YouTube recommended this interview between Tucker and Kanye. And so I ended up watching it. And then right before I did this video, I look it up and uh, Georgia. Like, really? Wow. That's weird. Just keeps popping up, that Georgia. Last week we talked about Georgia Maloney. All right. This is a little short, fun one. All right. Smoke them if you got them because you're all going down, right? This is my four in one. It, I thought it was a two in one. And when I wrote it out, I realized it's a four in one. So the story is that this is what Cliff High calls this group of people that are based out of uh, Switzerland, I believe. Uh, the W and the E and then there's the F. Um, they made a partnership with this search engine that's a lot like this one that whenever somebody searched for, I went to a concert with these guys back in the nineties with Lenny Kravitz and Dave Matthews band and blues traveler outdoor festival. Oh, it was awesome. Rusted root. Um, let it rain and protect us from this cruel sun. So we've got the sun and the rain. So if you were to giggle this phrase that changes, you know, like it's always changing. Hello. That's what it does. Like the seasons are these things changing, but these folks made an agreement with these folks that if one were to uh, giggle this phrase, that they would always get right at the top, always uh, resources from the un that we talked about in one of the other stories. So onion, the onion. And then I realized this, this word, if you spell it this way, onion, if you spell it this way, it makes union, which I thought was interesting. So these are all things that Jason has said are going down, right? This is going to be exposed as a hoax. These folks are going down. The the big tech companies are going to have lawsuits and they're going to be broken up or taken down. And uh, the U.S. is going to be leaving this and the building or the complex of buildings, I'm not exactly sure, in New York is going to be abandoned. So this one story hits on all four of these things that are going down, which I thought was really interesting because that's it doesn't actually fulfill any of these predictions. But it's definitely nudging all four of them in that direction. So I thought that was super cool. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> what, I can't see the whole thing there. Georgia. <laughs> yeah, right. Disneyland. His father is very smart. Kanye's father? Is he still alive? Because I knew his mother had died. I wasn't sure about his father. So anyway, that was that one. And my little sticky note on the bottom says to flip back to the to the front here. <clears throat> so you guys can look at the whole uh, thing to remind us all of what we talked about as I talk about this last one. Because um, in Jason's most recent live stream, someone asked him about this. Maybe a couple people did. And... Uh, it has to do with airplanes in the sky and the lines and such. 
And Jason did not engage with that conversation. And he basically said, if it can only be researched on the internet, it is not something that he in, gets himself involved in. Totally understand and respect that. I used to be huge into this. I've got a thousand pictures. Um, and kind of like Matt from Quantum of Conscience talks about um, the JFK lineup. You know, you've got your perp lineup. And even after all these years, we've not gotten any closer to narrowing it down even, you know? It's like the perp lineup keeps getting bigger. Nobody's gotten any closer to solving this mystery after all these years. And I feel the same thing about these uh, sky phenomenon, you know? Like after all these years of watching them, some people don't even acknowledge that they're there or that they're anything unusual. How come we don't know? How come no whistleblower has come out? No pilot has said anything. None of, none of these planes have crashed, leaving evidence all over the place. You know, like, what is up with it? Is it maybe nobody done it? Like I was talking about last week with the Nord Stream event. What if nobody did it? What if it is a uh, con trails like it's a con that really it's it's being done outside of human uh intervention at all and so everybody is looking at everybody else going well i'm not doing it are you doing it i'm not doing it are you doing it maybe they're doing it they come over and they're like Fuck no i'm not doing it no nobody's doing it nobody's admitting to it there's no whistleblowers there's lots of people taking pictures and lots of people raising a stink and people are doing analysis of chemicals in their gardens and saying, you know, obviously something's coming down from the sky. The, the forests in California are drying out and all the trees are dying, you know, but we don't really have any solid evidence that can, can connect the forests in California dying to something that may or may not be happening in the sky. And we know that this whole sky is simulated. Maybe those things aren't up there. It's just a screen. It's a projection. It's a, it's a television. Big, giant, blue television. I'd be curious to see, to hear if any of you guys have a theory one way or the other, not, not like theories about you think it's this, or you think it's that, or these people or those people, but is it possible that no people are behind it at all? A great book on the JFK murder being published in November this year. Okay. Two trees, that's a very interesting statement because, you know, that's on that list that I didn't, dropped on the floor again. Jason did predict that there would be new evidence about the Kennedy assassination coming out this year. He didn't say whether it was a book or TV or a movie or anything, at least not that I saw on there. But you are actually, two trees, you're saying that there is a great book like you already know about this book and it's coming out soon. It's being published in November this year. So, yeah. Did, did, does Jason know about this great book? Did you? Oh, that was going to be my next question. You didn't hear Jason say that. I don't remember Jason saying that either, but it's on the, the, uh, the list that he made that he posted a link to and I printed out. It, it's on there. Hey, Victoria. <laughs> So it's very, that's really cool. That's, that is a really cool thing that just happened. So two trees did not know about Jason's prediction. And I'm, I haven't heard Jason say anything that he knew about this book that two trees just mentioned. So it sounds like another one of the archaics predictions is about to be fulfilled. I'll send you the book author. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Do you guys know how to email me? Like if you go to the about and it says like, for business inquiries or something like that, you should be able to click on that and get my email. 
but I know people have had trouble with that and I've had to actually like type out my email. So yeah. Yes. Valley. I'm not sure what your yes is for. I, I didn't see the planes of ants fighting. I'm the snowstorm like on, like on your TV. I'm sorry. I, I can't translate that. Are the ants fighting? I'm the snowstorm like on your TV. I get the impression that that means you think that this is a possibility, but I'm not exactly sure what you're trying to say with those words in that order. Uh, the Archons. Yeah. bunch of uh, Kennedy and then we're back to uh, Kanye. So, oh yes, please do watch it later. Uh, I just finished. I just finished with all my news stories for this week. Holy cow. It's quarter to six already. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. It, does anybody have any questions? What is your take on geoengineering? Well, that is what we're, I mean, there are various kinds of geoengineering. I know that there's, well, I've heard, I don't know, but stuff being put into the oceans to encourage plankton to grow or something like that is geoengineering as well. Um, certainly the, if there's something going on in the sky at all, then that would that's traditionally i think what people think of this is geoengineering and um i'm i'm really starting to think that this uh is not does not involve people i think uh it is either drones that come from somewhere and go somewhere without any people being involved or at least you know people that are like us you know like in these avatars in this simulation or um, it's just a projection. It's just a movie up in the sky. Oh no, my collect connection's unstable again. Oh dear. Yeah, and it's like the thing that they're putting in the oceans is either red or brown. I. It's been a long time. It's been many years since I I remember that story, reading about it or watching it on YouTube. So I don't remember the details, but they were definitely putting stuff into the oceans to fix something. <laughs> what are my thoughts about satellites? I guess I never really, uh, I could go either way. It doesn't really, I, I guess I kind of have a Jason sort of a take on that, you know, like if it's in the sky, well, uh, eh. you know, it, could be this, it could be that, and does it really affect me one way or the other? I think it affects me if I think it is something. Like, if I think that the satellites are spying on me, then they are. And I would be worried about that, and I'd want to be shielding myself from that somehow. If I thought they were setting up, you know, like a, a grid, a 5G network around the whole planet you know, planet, then I would be concerned about that. And again, I'd want to be shielding myself from that. Um, I don't worry about things like that. And so it doesn't affect me. And I, I'm just now starting to realize that it was when I started talking about wearing a bike helmet way back in one of that, that video about when I don't drive, when I said, you know, like, I don't worry about crashing and I don't crash. <laughs> You know, like I was on the streets, like downtown Sacramento, right outside the Greyhound station. I was traveling and we had to get off the bus and take a layover or something. So I actually went, this is years, decades ago, like two decades ago, I took my joint out of my, out of my, uh, you know, rucksack or whatever. And I was smoking it in a little alcove up off the sidewalk, you know, on like downtown. Right. And a guy walks up to me and he's like, so what you doing? You know, is it, my name's D Money. What's your name? You smoking a joint? You know, starts you know share. We're sharing the joint. Well, his buddy walks up 
and he tries to sell my joint to his buddy for five bucks. I was like, hey, give me that. I'm like a 25-year-old white girl in downtown Sacramento. <laughs> I, not afraid in the least. And, you know, they wished me a good day. I said, nice to meet you guys. And that was it. I feel like my life has just kind of been bumbling along like that, not realizing what the dangers were. And so I was not afraid of them. And so those things didn't happen to me. And I'm just now putting that all, I'm just synthesizing all of that now, like in the last two, three months. So satellites. Yeah, that's my answer to your question about the satellites. <laughs> For me, it's like, <laughs> that's a great way to leave off. I like that. <laughs> For me, it's like, yes, totally. I totally agree. <laughs> Oh. What if they're trying to change the simulation from the inside? Well, I wondered at one point if they were trying to form the vapor canopy. I, and I guess I don't have an answer to that. I guess that's still on the table, as Matt would say. What if that's how the vapor canopy comes back? And it takes, you know, decades of them doing that to make it happen. Check out Dane Wigington. I think they're keeping us calm until the last moment. Fearless. Absolutely. Yeah. Fearlessness. Totally. And I think I have accidental fearlessness. <laughs> I think if I understood what, I don't know though, you know, like other people are afraid of things that maybe those things are, they don't exist. They're not a thing. You know, like I'm not afraid of things because they aren't real. <laughs> I don't know. So many questions. I love to have these conversations and thoughts though. You're know, like, I can think about this stuff like crazy and I have paid, I'll just be writing and writing and writing and fill up pages and pages and notebooks of stuff and, you know, wake up the next morning and go, Oh, I think I just figured it out and blow my mind before I even go to work in the morning. <laughs> You're supposed to do that after you get home from work. Because if you blow your mind first thing in the morning, man, it's a rough day. I had a wonderful day today. I hope you guys all did too. I had to go downtown on a Saturday, which is funny because last week I had to change my lives to Saturday so that I would already be home and I wouldn't have to be worrying about coming home from downtown. And then the very next week, I had to work downtown on a Saturday, <laughs> but I made it home obviously, but it was a, it's a perfect day. It's like 67 degrees, sunny, breezy, just beautiful. It was a beautiful day. I had a great time and uh, talking about my job, you know, recruiting volunteers to help out and hanging out with my new coworker. We just hired someone at the office. And so we're still getting to know each other. She's super awesome. So fear is the boogeyman in the closet. Yes, exactly. There's no monster there. There is your fear of a monster. That's what's there. Yeah, totally. Great day there too. Awesome. Yesterday it was like miserable. It was 42 and raining and today was perfect. And I think on that note, unless you guys have some more questions, I'm going to call it. This one was kind of a light one, not so much math. And we had a fun game in there. You guys are good. You figured it out before I got to the end of my questions. Kanye West. <laughs> yes, we can't. <laughs> my boss is a very big Obama fan. So I, I actually shared this little joke with her and she thought it was funny. So she laughed. That's good. <laughs> I got to be careful what I say about Michael in front of my boss. <laughs> she gets very upset. Oh, all right. Check in one last time for questions. Hey, I just got you working on Saturday. Actually, I love my job. I really do. So it doesn't even feel like work. Um, yeah, the AIX con, the con, the trails that are, con. it's a big con. It's my new theory on that. Kick some Archon ass. You're funny. I do try. Sorry for your boss. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it comes out and I get to see the look on her face. 
it a precious moment? I live in the future of this precious moment. <laughs> Is that mean? I hope that's not mean. I'll be there. I'll be there for her. She can cry on my shoulder. All right, guys, I'm going to take off. I hope you have an awesome rest of your weekend. And if you're not having a beautiful day today, I hope it happens for you tomorrow. And I will see you all again next time. Mwah. Love you.